Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a special review and unboxing for David Bowie's lost album, Toy. Recorded in 2000, but it was due to come out in 2001. The record label shelved it. Then it got released as part of Brilliant Adventure, the album collection box set that came out back in December, spanning 1991 to 2001, which is when this album was due for release. Uh, but now it is getting this standalone three CD box set release of it. Just came out Friday, January 7th of 2022. Before we dive into this though, if you are new to my channel, haven't already hit the subscribe button, please click the button. Also leave a comment, hit like, all those things help support my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, by subscribing, you'll be able to stay up to date on all that's going on in the world of music, just like this, with a review and unboxing of the brand new box set by David Bowie, Toy. So, a little quick history, background on Bowie. I know you guys know a lot of this stuff, but this part of it in particular is relevant to what I'm gonna talk about. So, he did start his career back in 65, releasing some singles, uh, lasted 51 years until he passed away six years ago on January 10th of 2016. And, um, you know, today being January 7th, it's almost six years to the day since he passed. So, nice little tribute here that they're releasing this. It's a great little tie-in, in my opinion. During that time though, just an absolute brilliant artist, um, able to constantly reinvent himself, yet stay current and somehow do this all without being contrived. He just had a real genuine nature to everything that he did. An utter genius musically. Now that's my opinion on this, but I think it's evident through his stunning catalog. And so now we finally have a missing piece, the missing link in the David Bowie catalog, this album here, Toy, to talk about. So. That leads us right into the next part of this, which is the album itself. It was scheduled to come out in 2001. So he records this in 2000, and it's sort of a trip down memory lane. Uh, and I'm gonna get into that in a bit uh, more in just a minute here, but he did this with his touring band that he was using in 2000. And these guys are a great you know, group of people here. We got Mike Garson on keyboards, who worked with him for a long time, Earl Slick on guitars worked with David Bowie multiple times. Gail Ann Dorsey on bass. She's phenomenal in my opinion. And the amazing Sterling Campbell on drums. So what a lineup here. Just great that they got the opportunity to record on this album here. And the sessions themselves featured some new material, but it also did some re-recording of David's early career. And that's why I brought up the histor historical aspect of this at the beginning, because this album here has tracks going back to 1965, those first singles that he recorded under the name Davy Jones. And you can see there behind me that they have done an archival release of this, an EP of those tracks. It's called 1966, where they gathered a bunch of that stuff up. So going back to 65, when he released these singles, the tracks, You've Got a Habit of Leaving, and I Dig Everything, they redid those. Some of the songs would turn up on later albums, like Uncle Floyd would later become the song Slip Away, and Afraid would later turn up on Heathen in 2002. So you've got a bunch of things like that happening from this album. So when listening to it, both for David Bowie, who went down memory lane because he was re-recording some older stuff, but us, if we know those catalogs, it's gonna be like hearing alternate versions of some of those things. So kind of like an alternate greatest hits, you know, and that's why I call this a trip down memory lane. Now this here that we're gonna talk about, the box set of it, the three disc portion of it, um, features, of course, the original album Toy that was scheduled to come out in 2001. Now, the album itself, while not a big revelation, it doesn't break any new ground or anything of that nature. But, as I mentioned, it's like this trip down memory lane. And I think Bowie was clearly having fun recording it. You can hear it in the performances. You know, he was breathing new life into these older songs, giving them the treatment of his experience. He didn't have that back in 65, 66 when he was doing some of these. So now he's able to bring that experience to these. I think that's pretty cool. Um, the album itself also, in my opinion, represents a crossroads for Bowie. It fit between two different albums here. We got Hours from 1999 and Heathen in 2002. And this was due to be released right in between it. Ours was a more conventional album, departing from the experimental nature of the two previous albums that he had done that had a lot of electronica and synthesizer and stuff of that nature, even the industrial flares and that sort of stuff in it. So he goes and he does um, Ours. But 
toy is in between this now. And when you're hearing this, you can hear that bridge, but the album that comes out after it, Heathen in 2002 was considered a comeback album when it happened. Who knows what would have happened if Toy had actually been released? Would Toy have been considered the comeback album or would it just have been considered the bridge? But many of the songs for Heathen were written for Toy. So you, you have to listen to it with that in mind. The songs themselves are very present day, which I think is interesting. They're in the moment, but stylistically, they're a nice throwback to the 70s era pop perfection that he started early on. And so this album here shows Bowie trying to fit into that modern landscape while still doing the throwback sort of thing. And I think he finally achieved all of that on Heathen. So this album for me is either that idea of a crossroads or a bridging album between those two. And I think it's great to finally have it as the missing link that will now connect the album Hours and Heathen. So there's three discs in this. Uh, disc one features the original mix of the album, the album itself that was due for release. Disc two in here has alternate mixes and some bonus stuff, some additional tracks on it. And disc three is titled Unplugged and Slightly Electric. And again, has some different tracks and running order and things of that nature. But let's get into this. Let's look at this here. So beautifully done. It's a matte finish on the box. We get the track listing written like that. And it does have a beautiful spine on it. And it is a lift top box. It takes a little bit to get into it. It's kind of snug but that's good, doesn't just fall right apart and we pop off like that. And I wanted to show you the inside of this because not a lot of box sets do this and I do appreciate when they take that extra time so we've got the word toy spiling around. Otherwise, kind of just a missed opportunity. So then we've got the booklet right on top, matte finish with the word toy and gloss. And I just think that's a great shot of Bowie there. I'll show you the book in a little bit. And then we've got the three discs here right after that. But let's take a thumb through on this book. There's that great shot of Bowie again. And then we open it here, get right into it, track listing, and just a lot of shots of Bowie in here, album information. So while there's not necessarily, you know, write up or any of that sort of stuff, it's done just as a David Bowie album. This is the release, this is the way that it would have been. Don't know if these are photos from the specific time period or something else, I'll have to look into that but you do get that sort of stuff. So it's nice to see the treatment that this album would have got. And the albums themselves, they just come right out of here. And we've got these three. So first one up being the album itself. And it does have an individual sleeve on the inside of this, but unfortunately, no plastic sleeves around these. So while they do that to those album collection box sets, including Brilliant Adventure that had just come out, I'm kind of surprised they didn't keep the plastic sleeve around those. So many people love those things and it's not part of this, but maybe that was one way they could bring down the cost of this. Um, I got mine for $34 off Amazon and fortunately it arrived undamaged. As you could see, all the corners of this thing were beautiful. But the vinyl version of this is $112. It is amazing the differential cost between CD and vinyl these days. So it used to be vinyl was the really cheap thing. Now it's the CD. I guess us CD fans will have to take advantage of it for a while. I hope it balances itself out at some point. But anyway, there you go. And I did want to point this out too. They do have a spine. So if you want to take this out, stick it on your CD wall like I have behind me, you can do that. It's not one of the flat uh, CD holders where there's no spine. And then we have the other two. So this one here being unplugged and somewhat electric. And again, the track listing on back. And they do alter the album cover ever so slightly by shrinking it down. Not much else. I kind of wish they had an alternate take of that album cover or something. And then we have the other one, the alternate mixes uh, titled Alternatives and Extras and so forth. What I did want to point out is why there are tracks that do repeat on this and they are in different mixes and, and uh, stylings. Each one of the albums has a different track listing, running order. So the first one starts off with I Dig Everything. When I say first one, I mean the original album. And then on the alternates and extras, which is technically the disc two, it starts off with Liza Jane and Unplugged and Somewhat Slightly Electric starts off with In the Heat of the Morning. So at least that way you can put these on and you can get a different feel from the start, not just repeating the same track, not just being in the same track listing or running order. So I do really appreciate that aspect about how they've done this here. And I'm looking forward to diving into this here and really kind of absorbing 
all the different interpretations of what that is, but also hearing that final album, the thing that should have come out, that we should have heard that we didn't, and we are now getting, what, 21 years later, because it was due in 2001, it's now 2022. Amazing that it's finally seeing the light of day here. So certainly great, but there you go. That in and of itself is uh, the David Bowie album, Toy, the standalone release, deluxe edition, inbox set, with three CDs. And certainly check the description for links to related videos. I just did a five favorite box sets video that was an album collections edition. And I reviewed the one, the David Bowie one behind me that you can see there, the Who Can I Be Now? box that spans from 74 to 76. And if you want to hear a little bit about that and uh, see me unbox it and open it because you're on a uh, David Bowie kick, do check that description and click that link and you can do that. Certainly, if you've enjoyed this video, consider sharing it out on social media. Both help get me a little more attention, but also uh, spread the word for David Bowie in this box set and the great album that it is. All right, everyone, uh, take care, have a good day, and I'll talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye.